Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I got introduced to uh, my good friend Joel uh, through our mutual connection, Deanna Krempel, who is just a, a fantastic friend of mine. We do a lot of speaking together, working together, and she's like, you have to meet Joel Evan, not Evans, Joel Evan, uh, rock star coach. You know, and the thing that's not only is he an awesome coach squad, but you know, he was a, a, a hero, a, a first responder for like 15 years. And then he really, th- those people go through a ton of PTSD, a ton of, you know, a mental strife. And it, Joel kind of really caught it before he got there too far into that part by going into, you know, a holistic and health. And he became a, a fantastic, highly sought over holistic and health coach. He helps busy and motivated professionals get healthy and lose weight and just get their life on track. He's also the host of the Hack Life podcast, which I can't wait to uh, go rock the mic with him on there. And he's really That's focuses healthy. on mindset, mindset and an alternative health. And his motto is live healthy, live happy. And you can't get any better than that. And Joel, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast, Varsity Squad. But first, Joel, what's your favorite color and why? Blue. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know why it's my favorite color, but I can tell you going back in the day, Leonardo, the Ninja Turtle, uh, was <laughs> blue, and dude. that was my favorite color. So uh, he was the That's leader, cool. by the way. Leonardo, Katana Blade, uh, leader of the squad. And I think, there you go. I, I've just been always gravitated to leadership, and uh, maybe that's why. I don't know, but dude, blue that, sticks out for me. That's awesome. I, I used to watch it in the, the cheesy, like, 1990 version. Leonardo was always my jam, too. And it's funny you say blue. I mean, I am looking at the Atlantic Ocean, so I get the blue every every morning but you you're in Boise man you're in Idaho and they have the uh, Boise State and their 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 turf is blue and the smurf yeah. turf there it's really cool man and I actually got to experience the game there it was like two degrees but still <laughs> had the time of my life but Joel man let, let's get into the roots bro like how you started you're like me um very high highly energetic um yeah we, we border on that ADSD or whatever they call that. We're, we're all over the place. And you and I talk. We're like, yes. ah, ah, ah. so <laughs> let, let's get into your roots, man. Let's hear yeah, about man. you and have me shut up for a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to just talk about the energy, let's go right there. Because I yeah, think, man. you know, when I was 18 years old, I was lost. I, I, I was I didn't know what I wanted to. I was graduating high school. My parents were getting divorced and I had all these friends. I went to a private high school. My friends literally I had like five good friends. They went to Stanford. Two of them went to Stanford, Cal, UC Davis, and UCLA. Do you know where Joel was going? Absolutely nowhere. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I I almost went into the military because I'm like, well, you know what? Uh, I'm passionate about uh, my country, and I'm just I was always kind of like patriotic, and I'm like, that'll be fun. I can do that. Uh, I grew up with a my father was in law enforcement, my grandfather was a San Francisco Police Department uh, officer, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll do that. And then I backed out at the last second because I said, well, all my friends are going to college; they must know something that I don't know. So I'll just go to the JC, and that'll buy me time. And nice. so I did. And one of the things though that I'll talk about energy was I started out at 18 years old. I started selling Cutco knives. And that okay. is a time that I really think when I look back and I'm like, well, how do, why do you have so much energy? Why are you so optimistic? Why are you so positive? And I think it really was when I became a Cutco salesman because I was taught at an early age, relatively early, attitude is everything. And I was mm. being you know, bombarded by Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy. I name those names right now. Nobody knows. You know those names. But uh, sure. there's a lot. I was on a podcast the other day, and they're like, I can't. Uh, dude, you're just my guy because I can't believe you're naming these people. Nobody talks about them anymore. Right. And those were the guys that I was listening to bombarding my subconscious and learning about mm. attitude is everything. And from that day on, I just remember – I could be having the worst day ever, and you ask me, Joel, how you doing? If the day was just okay or it was all right, you wouldn't know. I'd be like, great. It's an amazing day Fantastic. because yeah. I want to continue to – you know, it's that kind of NLP, I guess, you know, yeah. perspective. Level I want to – yeah, yeah I, you wouldn't know it, but I want to keep reinforcing like my day is great. It's going to get better. Sure. So I think that's when you talk about roots and energy, like that's where it kind of stems from. 25 years old, I got hired by the uh, – I, I ended up going into law enforcement. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had a, always like this business background, entrepreneurial spirit but I didn't know how to do it. There was no one in my family or no one to kind of cater that energy. So I fell into the trap that many of us did. Went to college, got a degree, thought I was supposed to get out, get a good job, have a white picket fence, 401k, pension, retire at 50 and live the good life. That's what I was told. And so that's what I was just programmed to follow that playbook. Got in, uh, got out of college, and didn't want to work as a police officer. My dad, like I said, was a police officer. I said, I'm going to be much better than my dad. I'll I'll do way more than him. 
Of course. Uh, I'm going to yeah. go for work for the FBI. And uh, guess what? It takes a little bit longer to get hired by the FBI. <laughs> a little bit, and yeah. I, a little bit, yeah. So uh, local law enforcement at the time was suffering. They were hiring. And my dad said, I think you would really like it. Try it out. And worst case scenario, you have all this experience. Go work for the FBI later, which was great advice. So 25 years old, I get hired by the Oakland Police Department. Anybody that knows Oakland, California, that is top five, dead or alive, the most dangerous cities, always murder yeah, capital, um, robbery, <laughs> very high volume yeah. crime. And, and actually they say – Cool study done out of the FBI showing three years in the Oakland Police Department as an officer, and you have worked about an 18-year career anywhere wow. else. So that's where I started out, and you know that also then led me to San Francisco PD, where I worked for the last eight and a half years. Do you want to tell? Should I tell everybody what happened just recently? Yeah, man, let's go. Let's, this is the story okay. that sets it up for sure. Okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, worked for San Francisco for about eight and a half years, and uh, you know uh, during that time, really, I was just becoming disenfranchised with police work, and I still think it's one of the most noble professions anybody can do. But the bottom line is, I felt like I was being weaponized for political reasons and just a pawn for everything, and I and I just. Sure didn't feel connected to it anymore. And I think having my kids and just a lot of other things, I realized I can do more in this world and I want to do more. And well, lo and behold, in October 2021, the San Francisco P Police Department gave me an ultimatum. They said, if you don't get this product, this, I don't know, I don't want to get censored. I don't want you to get censored, brother. Sure. If you don't get the juice, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. this product mm -hmm. that is safe and effective, you are fired. I said, yeah. well, you're going to have to fire me because... I don't align with that. And that's not who right. I say I am. And right. so I really feel like that was my opportunity. And I had in the background been starting a health coaching business and doing things in the background. But yeah. really that experience is what I feel like I was guided by either by source or God. And it was like, yeah. this is the time to burn the boats. And this is the time you need to lean into it. And so I did, I was always one foot in one foot out, not anymore, brother jumped all into it. That, that's awesome, man. And the, the coaching side that, do you, you work with people in more groups or one-on-one, -on -one, brother? Right now, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. So, you know, there was – my coaching program was getting filled up, and I was like, man, I'm going to have to – I had to create a course rapidly <laughs> and go into the group coaching uh, setup. At the same time, I kind of backed away at the moment from the – I'm still you. doing the coaching, but I yeah. backed away – and I'm actually kind of recalibrating. And so I have a book that I'm working on that's going to drop at the top of next year. And so because of that, because of the volume right now, of people coming into my mm -hmm. coaching business, mm -hmm. um, I'm just less. But so right now I have the ability to work one on one, but it won't be long. So I'm doing one on one and uh, that's going to phase into uh, a, slack, a hybrid. It's going to be a hybrid version of one on one. Yeah. And, and group. yeah, I do a lot more one on ones because I just feel like I'm more connected to the group. I just feel I'm a little bit disconnected. I do have one group. But the one on one, so you know, I'm right there with you on the energy on that. So when you're maybe you starting to work with someone one on one, Joel, is there any secret sauce, if you don't mind sharing, that maybe helps them find in their discovery period now? That uh, maybe help them find their blind spot. Yeah, love that. So I always like you introduced me. I always talk about mindset. I'm a I'm big on health, but mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, like if your mindset, I I, I know many great healers that have healed people just by putting a different idea in their head. And that's crazy, right? People can't even fathom that. But I've seen people heal from endometriosis, fibromyalgia, all these things. Sure. And it wasn't a magic pill. It was just like they touched them in a certain way and boom, like it was a chiropractic adjustment. How could right. that possibly happen? Well, I can tell you, if you understand high-level healing, there's, there's some things that can ha be happening in the background. But one of the big things that I've seen a lot, brother, is, you know, People not being aligned, again, talking about being aligned with their truth, and they don't even know what that is. Just like me, they're being programmed by school, ideas, sure. beliefs from their family, and all these things. And next thing you know, they're in their 40s, 30s, and they're just living this life that they don't know why they're even here. And sure. so one of the biggest exercises that I have people do that really just – Puts a, makes a lot of shifts happen yeah. is the perfect day exercise, which I think a lot of people have heard of, but believe it or not, a lot of people haven't. And I've seen people's lives change dramatically. I've seen people start businesses. I've been, I've seen people move to different States and move to different places because so the, the perfect idea exercise, let me just explain it really yeah, quick. Please. The idea is you wake up tomorrow. We snap your fingers, right? You wake up and Tomorrow, Scott, you're living your perfect day. Like, what is that? Like, what does that look like? Mercy, yeah. 
Yeah, like if you, what does it look like when you wake up in the morning? I ask people, who are you waking up next to? They usually get a good chuckle there. I'm like, well, I mean, that's something to think about, right? Like, <laughs> like what, what life, right. you know, what life are you living mm-hmm. right now, right? I mean, and, and a lot of us, we stay in these relationships for comfort and just for ease, and sure. but it's not serving you. And so, again, who are you waking up to? What's your breakfast like? Where are you located in the world? And it just – all these amazing ideas. What are you doing for a living? What would you really want to be doing? Because most people are working in their nine to fives or whatever they're doing, just like me. They're not satisfied. Again, it's just comfortable. Yeah, you make good money. You're making two hundred thousand dollars or whatever you think is good sure. money, but you're not. You're not fulfilled. Right. And so that exercise really will show you a huge shift into how love you're that. living your current reality and what you really want. Dude, I love I love that exercise because you as a coach are really listening with your neck you're leaning in that way you can really help them build a game plan because we're coaches not so much consultants where consultants will tell you what to do you're actually because everybody knows what they want right joel but they don't know how to talk themselves into it so when you set up that perfect day it's like dude you can set up a game plan like a coach to where when they have that idea through the question that, that's freaking awesome dude so i appreciate you saying that so joel maybe while you're in this discovery period and you're working with somebody is there any good question that you wish that they would ask you as the coach, but never do? <laughs> wow. I don't, man. Is there any questions I wish they would ask me? Now you're talking about when they, when their people Discovery are just reaching out. Period. We're still sitting down here. If you're starting to coach me, I'd be like, bro, yeah. what's your lineage, man? Tell me your story. Tell me that, that that's the coach. What I want to, cause you know, you're a sports fan like myself and yeah. you know, you know, these coaching trees that come down, like, Anyone that coached under Bill Parcells, right? We would probably be a solid coach, you know? Yeah. But like, I might ask lineage. I might ask it to tell me your story. You'd, you would tell me it just, you know, how you did, you know, three minutes ago. So I just wonder, is there any other questions, man, that you wish they would ask you? I, I think the big one is really what you, you hit. I mean, I think that would be a big one. Like, what's your lineage? And, yeah. and, and then the other one would be like, what what's your why? Like, why, 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 man. why, why, are, you, why yeah. are you doing this? And actually I had a coach ask me that just the other day and yeah. you know, it's like, Scott, yes. like our, our why is like, our, our why's are always, I mean, I don't want to say they're always changing, but sometimes even I, I, I have a way here, right? Yeah, they, they evolve. evolve, they change. Yeah. Right. And I have different passions and different joys. And, and, I, and actually it was just as a guy who's like pretty in tune with this, it kind of took me off. I was like, man, you know, oh man, well, that's a good, wow. What, what is it that I really what, what drives me right now? Yeah. And I told him uh, transformation. Mm. I said, tr- seeing Dude. people transform, right? Yeah. And even, and I got to just say like, even when I am in my darkest moment or just like, man, it's like nothing's working. The business is doing terrible or whatever. Right. The family, everyone hates me. I- I'll pull up a, a testimonial that I have like a video. Damn, testimonial I'm man. Yeah. And I see, and I see one of them. And I just, it reminds me, it connects me. Like, that's oh, why bro. you're doing this. It that's brings why. You back, man. Yeah. You see, that's awesome, Joel. Thank you. So, as as a coach, and I don't want you to think on this. I want you to tell me what's your strength. Obsession. I'm yeah. obsessed, dude. I'm obsessed and uh, just resilience. Really, I, I I was talking to a great friend. Uh, I have to introduce you to George Ryan. He's out of uh, he's a captain with the L.A. Police Department, and uh, I I told we were talking last night. There was a huge win and a huge uh, lit, lit, what is it litigation? No, I don't know. A legal win. A legal, legal win. win. There we go. Happened <laughs> last night, and uh, we were just talking, and I said to him, I was like, you know, I never really thought about this, like what I did, what this, what I stood for in that moment. I right. said a lot of people laid down their swords. A lot of people just, you know, even the toughest guys, I don't care who they were, like the toughest SWAT guys, whatever, yeah. they laid down their swords, and they gave in. And I said, I, I never really thought about it, but I, I didn't. And uh, I held my ground and I said, sure. not many would do that. And he's, he's like, Dude. yeah, man, you're like the top of the one, 1%. And it, and it just made me realize like, I'm, this is a different game that I'm playing and I'm not trying to, you know, stroke my ego or just talk myself no, up. Do, it was just bro. a kind of rea- It was a reality. I'll for me. stroke I, it I for you, bro. I, yeah, that I hadn't thought weird, about squad. That sounded weird, <laughs> but, but no, I, no, I feel you, man. How much do you appreciate that strength of being obsessed with helping people transform? I mean, dude, it just drives me, man. Like, I, I, I mean, I think going back even to just my, my mom when she had breast cancer, and that was re- another reason that started my journey because I felt crippled that the people closest to me 
I knew all these things about health, but I couldn't help them. I didn't understand right. systems and protocols, how to get them better. And that right. bothered me. And so that led that obsession led me actually to getting all these naturopathic certifications because I wanted to know the why I wanted to know the root cause. And so, I mean, I just driven by it every day, man. I mean, I, I think the only thing I can think about bad about the obsession is that I'm a dog. I'll work every day. I'll work on the weekends. And so yeah. my wife has to bring me back and be like, uh, it's time to spend That's awesome. Having a support system like that. <laughs> so, yeah. What's her name again? My wife's name is Nini. She, her That's actual Gina. name is Gina, but uh, she's Latina. And so Latin women, if you know anything about Latin women, guys, or I'm sorry, Latin culture, they have like five different nicknames. And oh, so yeah, they do. Happens to, yeah. That happens to just be one of her yeah. five nicknames. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, both of my JITS coaches are Latina. One of them is a woman, woman, Tubby Aliquin. She's ranked number four in the world. And, you know, her name's Tubby, but she's 115 pounds. It's, it, you know, just kind of the, the funny stuff. So, yes. How about weaknesses, man? Uh, weaknesses i would I mean, say you my, don't, yeah you, you know them and you work through them but what, what's yeah. one glaring maybe that you, uh, you fight with every day brother? dude i'm gonna tell you right now i'm gonna tell yeah. you right now i just hired a coach i just i just got off the phone with a coach well, good yesterday. for you <laughs> absolutely brother and, and people you know again they I, that's the biggest problem with coaches we think we can't be coached so uh i i hired a, a coach to to be a better dad to be a better father to be uh, uh, uh to rise up and that's um awesome, he, you know here's that's my biggest struggle right now i think is be, being an entrepreneur you have to be somewhat crazy in the head you really do because it's not you get punched in the face every day and you're not okay. it's not a nine to five where you just check in and check out and life is good yeah. no but there's things happening in the business and you're going up and down like a roller coaster and to weather those, you have to be crazy and obsessed. Like I talked about, but part of that obsession, sometimes I'm not present and I'm not present with my kids. And I know that. And so, because I'm just so busy and I'm so calculating, like what's the next move I'm going to do. Yeah. And uh, so that, that I know is, is a, is a weakness of mine. And that's Thank what I'm you, trying man. to work on. And so I, 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 like, again, hired a coach. I'm like, super excited. This guy's a very well-known, he has a major podcast. He's a very well-known guy. And I'm very confident. Like uh, the, I need, I need a tribe of men, of strong men and people to just to learn from and, and, and get better. And, that's and I know awesome, it's going to happen. Thank so, you yeah. for, being freaking transparent on that, Joel. A lot of people will say, sometimes I don't ask the right question. Dude, you went deep, bro. And I really, really appreciate that. So, Joel, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Long time ago. Yeah, right. right. So it's almost coming up on 40 years, right? Let, let's get in that 40, DeLorean. So there you go. Let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly, man. Let's go back to the uh, the double deuce, the 22-year-old Joel. What kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on him? Not so much to change anything, because you learned a lot in your journey. But to maybe help them shorten the learning curve, blast through and level up just a little bit quicker. Really, what I said in the beginning, man, it's beliefs. I, I would have, I would have told him to just erratic, to really question his beliefs, his upbringing, what his, you know, thinking. What is success? What is success? Right. What is success to you? Because again, what success was to me was what my parents told, programmed me and told me, which was get a good job, get married, get a pension have a nice career and retire. And exactly. I don't think any of that's yeah. true. I'm yeah. living my highest version of myself. I think in this moment at 40 years old and, and that was, uh, uh, you know, I had to actually, here's the crazy thing. I had to go through a lot. I had to go through a lot of struggle and a lot of pain. And so I think that's even another thing I would say is, Hey man, on the other side of this is yeah. greatness. And, and you can share that journey, man, with flexing your hustle muscle, getting out there and doing it with your clients, which helps them resonate, man. I really, I really, really love that. So, Joel, how do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date. Hopefully it's a bazillion years down the road, brother, because this world needs you. But how do you want Joel's dash remembered? Somebody just asked me this the other day, not something I really thought about, but and now you're asking me. I would say the big thing for me is I want people to know that I, I help change their lives in some yeah. way, in a positive, in a really positive way. That, you know that's what I think is going to be on your tombstone which i'll probably be i'm 10 years older than you so hopefully i'm done gone but maybe i can look down from above but i, I think that it's going to say joel did it for the intention not the attention because i see your social i see your stuff you're not screaming joel 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 you know what i'm saying and i yeah. dig that dude and what you're telling me how you really dig in deep with your clients i think that's what you really do man and, and that's that's fantastic and joel what do you think people misunderstand the most about you Ooh, I think, uh, you know, I think people think probably that I'm perfect or that I have it all together, right? He has it all together. 
this guy, right? Especially Ooh, on we're media. like good actors, man. Yeah, man. Uh, like, you know, I'm on social media and, and they always say, right, people on social media are always just pumping it up and saying the yeah. good. A part of the reason why I do say I want to show, highlight the good is because I want to put out that positivity. I want that to continue right. to resonate because the more you focus on that, the more yeah. that, that, that energy is going to flow. But, you know, I don't have it all together. There's a lot of things I'm trying to figure out, but I, I tell you what, I won't quit. And that, that is for sure. Dog, and so I'm a t- <laughs> you, you won't you will not see me quit. And so that's love what it. I, um, but I think the misunderstanding might be is that, Hey, he has it all figured out. I don't. Dude, I, I love that transparency too, Joel, because I put out my quotes of the day, blah, blah, blah. And every once in a while, I'll be like, dude, I need prayers. You know what I'm saying? I'll just throw it out there. Not, not like I don't do the mile long story. No offense to the people that do. I yeah. just like need prayers. I need to feel the vibes, you know, and I'll get more support from people with that because of being and giving the good. Yeah, yeah. Are you seeing that out there too? The more you give the good, the more people there support when you're in that situation. It's so, it's so true. And like, I'll throw out some very high level educational post on the cancer <laughs> and this. And I'm like, I'm like, man, this is going to be so good. And people could care less. Right. I share a story about like, and to me, it's, I don't even want to share this story because I feel like it's egotistical, but I'll just do it because I, I realize it's important. It's starting something that I'm starting to learn is that I need to ask for help. I'm always, I'm always, you know, and I just got a chance to sit down with Dave Meltzer and he said, Joel, there's two things I ask myself every day. One is who can I help and who can help me? I never ask who can help me. Bro, and that's something I'm really trying huge. to get out better because he says it and it's true. The more someone can help you, like Scott, if you can help me, mm-hmm. I'm going to appreciate more in my life. But guess what? Yeah. I'm going to bring it back to you. and You're going to appreciate. Bro, because, so, it's just, yeah. It's so many just, people so amazing. talk about give, 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 right? We, we At times, trying to our whole team is give, give, give till it hurts so good, right? But you open the reciprocation, man. Like I have plants in my room and it's like those plants wouldn't be living if it wasn't for me breathing out carbon dioxide for them to breathe in in the whole world so if there's a give and take that's naturally occurring but we block ourselves off from that i love i love how you put that man so let me ask you something anything keep you up at night projects just pro i got so brother i got so much stuff going on right now Dude, so I, got, you and i are both like perfectionists man it's I, I, like we want to nail it but we also know that the more we strive for perfection, we'll hit greatness. And it keeps me up at night too, dude. I, I've it's got, funny. you know, there's that, there's that famous uh, guy who talked from good to great. I can't, Jim Collins. He oh, says, yeah. if you have more than three priorities, you have none. And I really do believe that, right? Yeah. Because the more your brain just can't focus on more than three. Well, right now, if I look at my whiteboard, I have about six and I know that's a problem. Uh, but man, I just, I, I don't know how to turn it off. Like just that's right. that entrepreneurial mind. I, 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 I've got a book coming out. I've got a product that I'm looking at developing with another guy and just some you rock that, your that, podcast. You got a lot of stuff. Podcasts. Going. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just, yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's take out of this equation, this question, Joel, anything electronical like computers or cell phones or anything, but what are three things Joel can't live without? Ooh. And it can be anything, just nothing technological. Nothing technological. Okay. I would say, is it going to be cheesy if I if I say like my family? Is that cheesy? Is no, that I cheesy hope one? you say number one, bro. <laughs> you better okay. mean I was going to kick your ass. <laughs> okay, good. I was glad that could be one. I didn't know if that was going to be too cheesy or not. No. Um, you know what's crazy is too is like during this journey uh, that I've gone on and just going from like, you know, losing a steady income and just leaning into this whole process is – um, really just seeing who my true friends are and stuff. And then <laughs> there's a lot of people that turned their back on me and said, you're an ignorant, you're an ignorant person for saying some of the things you're saying. And they, these are close friends and family. And yeah. uh, so it's really interesting. And, and in this process too, just having my family it, throughout this whole process, it, it's been, it's been absolutely, you, you realize you just, yeah. there's that sense of gratitude, right? So, yeah. uh, okay. So that would be one. Uh, I would I would definitely say something that has to do with my mind. So I'm going to say something like a, a journal, like the five minute journal, yeah. something to recalibrate my mind, because that's all you really need. You don't sure. need. Any, I tell everybody you don't need any of these stupid hacks. I've got a sauna over here. I have an eighteen thousand dollars stim machine that I use <laughs> that I use for physical therapy on people. Yeah. You don't need any of that, man. Right. You can control what's in your mind. You can do Bro, anything. Absolutely. And th- that's that's the eighteen thousand dollar hack right there. Right. So it would definitely be something like that that controls my mind. And then, you know, we were talking about this before. I'm just going to say this just because it's on the tip of my mind is uh, maybe essential oils. You know, I'm into that. Yeah. And, I need, and if I can't have 
you know, something I'm going to need. I, I'm a big natural health guy. So if I can have something to use in to maintain my health, uh, yeah. and I can carry it anywhere. Let's go with that. I love it, man. I love it. And I'm going to add a fourth for you as community. I think you and I yeah. are part of our oxygen as community, man. You know what exactly. I'm saying? That's why you and I thrived during COVID because we continue to build a community no matter how it, if it had to be virtual, we had to do it. You know what I'm saying? I met Deanna through who connected us through adding her to my community during that time. No, I, I, I love that, bro. So, I launched my podcast December 2019. Unbeknownst to me, that the say that again. Was gonna, December what? December 2019. I launched my podcast. What date? Uh, it was like the 31st. Like I did it like the day of like New Year's first yeah. episode launch. Mine was December and, 19th and 19th. It, dude, no shit, and, dude. Yeah. And, and and my thing was I was only gonna do in person interviews. Well, that was right. a bad idea with COVID. <laughs> but dude, I did as much as I could in California. Yeah. We did all these uh and that was a bad place to be at the time if anybody knows about yeah. the pandemic. And uh yeah, you're right, man. Uh I love it. Man. I love it. So squad, we are going to take my good friend Joel Evan through our lovely enough lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, podcast for RC Squad. We are back, and Joel, you and I are going to definitely hook up. We're going to rock stages. We're going to have a lot of fun, uh, but and we're going to probably go through these questions, uh, you know, just over a brain grenade or protein shake or whatever, man. And we'll probably spend 15, 20 minutes on each one. But today you got five seconds with zero, and I mean zero explanations. Okay. They can all be answered that way. Ready yeah. to level up? Let's go. Do it. Joel, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Uh, Gratitude. Gratitude is the highest form of vibration. Beautiful. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Subconscious reprogramming in the morning, every morning. So you see me walking down the street, you man, like Fergie's not vibing good, man. He he looks like he's in his doldrums. What book might you hand me to level me up? The Rays of Dawn by Dr. Thurman Fleet. Yeah, you go. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? The fire emoji. Beautiful. Nicknames growing up? Uh, jo- Jojo or Joel. Joel, Joel yeah. Not, Got not it, jo- 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 yeah. Love it. Chess, checkers, or Monopoly? Chess. No, no, no. Checkers. Sorry. Checkers. checkers. Those are the same, man. We're, yeah. we're the ADHD type yeah. team. Checkers on chips. <laughs> I, go to ice cream flavor. Go to ice cream flavor, uh, chocolate chip, and uh, and <laughs> vanilla there, there, i love it there's a uh there's a sandwich called the joel joel man build that sandwich for me Ooh, it's gonna be a lot of a lot of meat mustard no mayo absolutely no mayo and okay. some type of uh sourdough sourdough bread you throw some man candy on it a little bacon oh yeah thank you okay. i said lots of i said lots of meat so for sure it's gonna, yeah <laughs> roast beef love uh, bacon it. mustard yeah beautiful Favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? One is my church, and then the second one is I just partnered with B1G1. And so I actually – I pick uh, – they're, a, for, they're a, a great organization online. The buy one, get one is kind of like the thing. But you yeah. can partner with multiple um, uh, charities. And so I, I will pick different ones uh, That's awesome, routine, routinely. So, yeah. That's awesome. And the last question, and you can elaborate on this, but – a little bit, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 80s for sure. <laughs> Dude, you know, we can have you. We're gonna we're gonna throw down, be some good times here. So, Joel, how can we help or how can we find you, brother? Yeah, check me out, uh, joelevancoaching.com. I'm on Instagram a lot at joelevancoaching, or check out the Hacked Life podcast. Guys, I love to connect with people, man. I Like you said, tribe, community. Uh, I run my Instagram right now still, so if yeah. you shoot me a DM, it's me, I, I promise. Love it. Um, and so, yeah, that's the best way to, to reach out to me. I'm also actually telling people, Scott, because I love Instagram because it's been a great venture for me to you know connect with a lot of people but sure. bottom line is i get censored a lot and that platform could take me down any minute so yeah. if people could just go to my website sign up for my email that's just the best way i can actually i'm signed up absolutely man with people in the future yeah and just get over to joel evan and uh and actually before you even try to leave this page it has a really nice pop-up so make sure you put your uh email address in their squad and you're going to get some fantastic stuff uh he does get censored i get censored and it's just a it's part of it um, so how about this book, dude? What's yeah. going on? Like in in a brief synopsis, because I do want to add it into the show notes. I think by the time this drops, it might be ready. And I can't wait for my uh, signed copy too. 
<laughs> you got that right, brother. <laughs> yeah, the book's going to be really what my journey has been over the last year and a half of helping busy professionals lose weight holistically. I mean, I'm mm. going deep into it, into the mindset, into the detox. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the detox. What, what are you talking about? Liver, gallbladder. So I'm going to be going into all of that and why yeah. I see it's so important. And then I'm going to throw in some of those, those biohacks and some of those fun things that I like to do. We get into sleep, recovery, habits, and, and really like what I think on a high level let's stop talking about calories in calories out. I know some fantastic coaches that do that and they get great results and yeah. I understand why it works and good for them. Keep doing it. But I work with a lot of professionals who they have kids, they have a family, they have a mortgage. They're not counting calories and they just don't have the time sure. nor do they want to. And there's a way to really create this. Holistic they want to balance. feel good with what they put in their body. I, I love it. And yeah. I understand that we kind of talked a little bit off Mike, that you're going to offer a free half hour of power to, uh, uh, to a, a lucky listener or just really anybody that maybe want to opt in and have a nice little conversation with you and, and tell us a little bit about what they can expect with that. Yeah. Anybody uh, I'm ready. Uh, listen, go, t- go sign up to the email. There's actually a, a nice, if you go to my Instagram, the profile, you can sign up and I'm giving like a free, like my free diet cheat list, uh, cheat, cheat sheet that I actually, I give this to my private wellness clients. So this is a really good one. This isn't like some cheapo freebie. It'll really give you a, a, like a blueprint of like how to structure meals and, and kind of like the blueprint, I think to overall health and weight loss. And then, yeah, anybody, any of your listeners that want to jump on a 30 minute call for me for free, I will give you, I promise you will walk away in 30 minutes for free with a blueprint for health and optimization and kind of have a, a roadway and a path of where you want to go. I love that, bro. And, and just do me one last solid. It's very generous. And thank you, brother. Uh, Give me one last salad and leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us and internalize and take action on. The big thing that I tell everybody is aggressively take imperfect action. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, if I didn't do that every single day. Um, I'm wondering who should I take this? Should I do this? People are sitting on the sidelines right now, wondering if they should put out a certain post or something. And the bottom line is there are people that are dying. Literally, there are people that are dying and falling asleep, crying because they need your help. And you're too, your ego is getting in the way from you actually putting out that post or putting out that offer that we just talked about that, that offer to serve. So go out there and serve aggressively, taking perfect action and you will see some amazing results. That's beautiful. And thank you so much. And squad, we had an awesome conversation, a free masterclass with my good friend, Joel Evan here. You know, he's 18 years old. He's watching his friends go to Stanford, watching him to go to these colleges. He went really nowhere at at, at first. And that resonated with me so much that I hopped into the military because I had nowhere to go. Uh, But, you know, I I saw that me me and Joel are kind of brothers of different mothers, man. You know, we, we were not sure what to do, but he understands the attitude it's everything. There, there's no excuses for having good energy. And the way you can do that is by being grateful for what you have and wanting to give, give, give it, but also be open to reciprocate. He mentioned the Cortez burning the bridges and really start to lean into his challenges. You know, he has a perfect day exercise. You know, he wants, and I'd love you to get with Joel for that 30 minute, you know, half hour of power. And I'm sure he's going to probably break it down with you with a perfect day exercise. Who are you waking up to? The location you're waking up, your eating, your movement. Joel will get you there. If you're starting to work with the coach, Joel reminds us to say, you know, ask them their why. Why are they doing that? You know, I've said it before, you know, Joel's doing it for the intention, not the attention. You know, he's planting seeds that he's probably uh, planting trees that he's probably never going to sit in the shade of because of how much he gives, you know, because he's obsessed with helping you with your transformation. He doesn't want you to buy into your negative beliefs. He wants you to challenge them. And if you don't know how, like my good friend Leah Woodward, Leah Woodford would say, get your asking here. Ask for that help. And that's pe- people like Joel are available. You know, he reminds us something about little Jim Collins. If you have more than three priorities, then you really have none. So really get a coach. Help set up that game plan for priorities. Make that coach Joel. You know, again, I said, I think I'm going to name this episode leaning into your dream life or leaning into your good life because that's what Joel does every day. He leans in. And lastly, he wants you to aggressively take imperfect action. That's exactly what my good friend Joel does. He levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's humble. He's hungry. He's earned his varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. Brother, I absolutely love your guts. And I mean that with everything, every eon of me. And thank you so much for coming on, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate you so much, man. You bet. Chat soon.